Okay, after spending about a week and a half here at my uh, Arizona ranch, heading back out on the road today. Gonna start the trip up to the Wyoming ranch, which is gonna take the better part of two days. Uh, it's blowing a hurricane today, it's very dusty. Okay, I gotta get out, open the gate. And then I gotta lock the gate behind me. First time I'll have locked the gate since I've been here. Okay, let me get that done and we'll hit hit the open road here in a bit. Okay, gate's locked. Eh, kind of sad seeing it disappear in the rear view mirror. Okay, got a little bit of a drive to get to the highway, the blacktop. Um, now here's the deal. My original plan was to head over into New Mexico again stop in Albuquerque at uh, Surplus City and do some shopping. I have a video that I did uh, a year or two ago when I shopped at Surplus City. I wasn't going to make another video. I was just going to do some shopping there because I love that place. And um, So check that out. I'll put a link to that video up there if you're at all into like electronic surplus and stuff. Um, so and then from there I was going to cut north at Santa Fe and then take 285 up through central Colorado and then continue on like on 40 or something up up into Wyoming. Well, I looked at the weather last night and central Colorado is just getting hammered with rain and snow and nastiness. And uh, so I'm going to take a different route. This is a route I've taken many times before. I'm just going to take uh, 191 straight north through Arizona, through Utah. Um, got to go through Moab. Uh, got to cut over on I-70 into Colorado, up on the northwest corner of Colorado, and probably spend the night at Grand Junction and hopefully miss most of the weather today. Now tomorrow, unfortunately, as I get further north and east and start heading towards I-80 in Wyoming, I'm sure I'm going to hit some rough weather. In fact, we'll be lucky if the interstate isn't closed. They close I-80 regularly up there because of bad weather, um, blowing snow, zero visibility, that sort of thing. It's high winds. You know, that sort of thing. So we'll see how it goes. I think it's going to be pretty smooth sailing today. It's just going to be boring sailing because there is a whole lot of nothing between here and Moab, Utah. So, uh, yeah, I'll be spending most of the day driving through some pretty boring topography. But uh, there'll be a few interesting things along the way. I'll give you... I'll give you a look now and then if we get to anything interesting. But uh, I got a little ways to go yet on this uh, really rough gravel road before I get to the blacktop. Okay, we've made it to the asphalt. Now, I've got about 20 miles to go to get to the little town of St. John's and then that's where I can catch 191 North. So that's where I'm headed next. So here we are rolling up on St. John's, Arizona. Uh, first thing you pass on the left is the LDS Church. Um, a lot of these little towns out here were originally founded by the Mormons way back when. I forget, we just passed the sign, I forget when this town was founded. But a lot of the little towns out here, the uh, the Mormons were like the first whites out here and they founded a lot of these towns. Uh, there's the Alco. That was opened a couple of years ago and then closed almost immediately. I was kind of surprised they opened such a big store in such a small town. I think they were expecting people to come from far and wide and shop there and it really really didn't happen and within a year or so they were out of business again. What do we have going on up here? Looks like maybe prisoners? Work crew? 
Yep. Arizona Department of Corrections work crew. Well, I guess it gets you outside anyway, huh? Let's see, we just passed the high school. This is a little Ace hardware store over here. It's actually an Ace combination of Ace and grocery store. And really, it's not very good at being either. There's, there's not much of a selection in there. But, you know, it's the closest hardware store, and I've had to make runs into here to, to get stuff for the ranch many times. It's, uh, it's a much further drive to a bigger hardware store. So there's a... Uh, yeah, not a whole lot here to St. John's. We'll we'll be up in the center of town here shortly. I'm going to stop at the gas station up here. Yeah, Junction 191, one half mile. I'm going to stop here at the Circle K, get some ice and a cold drink, get back on the road. Okay, mission accomplished. Got um, cold drinks, ice for the cooler, snacks for the road, and an empty bladder. So I guess... We are ready to held, head out into uh, the northern Arizona wilderness here on uh, Highway 191, which we will spend pretty much most of the day on until we get up to I-70 in Utah. Oh, we're just about to cross over the Little Colorado River here, which when it's not flooding is just a little stream which hardly has any water in it right now but uh the town of st john's has actually been washed away by that little stream a couple of times in its history when there's devastating floods i've actually been to the source of the little colorado river up in the white mountains it's just a little trickle up there you can straddle it with your legs but uh yeah, if there's like heavy snow melt or a bad storm up there in the mountains that dumps many inches of rain over a short period of time, that thing becomes a raging torrent. Okay, so we are headed due north on Highway 191, and we are going to be on this road for a very, very, very long time. And this is about as exciting as it gets right here, folks. <laughs> uh, there will be a few interesting areas. I'll, I'll give you a look at them when we roll by them. Well, I'm about a half hour north of St. John's on uh, 191. We've gained a little bit of altitude, so there's some trees here. Been going uphill pretty steady. Now we're coming up on an area called Witch Wells. Not so much a town, it's just a crossroads with a name, okay? There's really nothing there except a bar. Um, now, I was gonna... I was gonna head east at the crossroads at Witch Wells and head through the Zuni Reservation. And uh, there's some really pretty stuff on Zuni land. And then was going to continue east through some really pretty high country in New Mexico. And uh, then turn north and get on I-40 at Grants and go into Albuquerque. But that's kind of all out the window because I don't really want to get tangled up in the bad weather they're having in central Colorado right now. Because that's... That's what I was going to do. I was going to go up through central Colorado, kind of follow the Arkansas River Valley north. And that's a really pretty drive. You know, this road here, this will lull you to sleep. But boy, the, the scenery on that drive through central Colorado is just amazing. But, you know, I don't want to be snowed and hailed and sleeted on, you know, all day. It's going to slow me down at the very least and make driving treacherous. So... So we'll take this boring route here. Um, I actually looked at properties out here in the Witch Wells area before I bought uh, the ranch down by Concho. Uh, there's some nice property out here, uh, really pretty country, but 
I decided it is just too remote. It's another half hour further to the nearest decent hardware store, or decent grocery store, or whatever, than what I've got now. So, you know, it's already a 60 mile round trip to a decent hardware store or grocery store from where I am now. So I decided to pass on this Witch Wells area. In fact, we're coming up on the crossroads right now. Yeah, I was going to turn on Highway 61 and take it east. The New Mexico border is only a few miles to the east. And then you'd be on Zuni land for a while. And then um, up in some really pretty high country. We're talking like, you know, almost a mile higher than this. Oh, so, yep. Here's the Witch Weld Bar. That's all, that's all there is. A crossroads and a bar. But what you don't see is off to the, to the left. Back here is probably, I don't know, a million acres of property that's all subdivided into, um, you know, 40 acre parcels and 80 acre parcels and 160 acre parcels. And there's a lot of them out there. And I looked at quite a few of them before I bought my 40 acres. I just wanted to be a little closer to town without, you know, having to deal with a lot of traffic and city lights, you know, for my astronomy. And I decided this was just a little bit too remote. There's some hardy folks living out here, let me tell you. Because, uh, yeah, you don't go into town on a whim from out here. You, uh, you plan for it. And from here on north, it just gets more and more remote. Uh, we'll be on the Navajo Reservation pretty soon. Be driving through it for a long time. And, uh, yeah, you're even further from any, uh, any serious towns up there. Okay, well, that was the excitement of Witch Wells. Um, not much more of note between here and Sanders. Okay, we're coming into the outskirts of Sanders. I don't know if it's showing up on the video, but pretty far up ahead there, I can see the interstate, Interstate 40. I can see the trucks on it. Uh, we crossed onto the Navajo Reservation a little while ago and going to be driving through the reservation, north through it, for quite a bit here. I just got to get on the interstate here and uh, jog a little ways over and then continue north once the two roads separate again. But, uh, oh wow, traffic. There's a truck in front of me. I haven't seen any other vehicles, really, since I left St. John's. It's a freaking traffic jam here. Got two vehicles in front of me. This guy looks like he's having a little tire trouble. So there's really not much to Sanders. Um, I think there's a few um, tribal offices, a high school, um, general store, and that's about it. Ooh, gas. Cheap on the reservation here. 414. I don't need gas right now, but hopefully, you know, I'm going to be on the reservation for a good part of the day, driving north through a lot of little towns, which if you've read, read Tony Hillerman's novels, you'll recognize the names of, you know, Lieutenant Leaphorn and uh, Jim Chi. Uh, spend a lot of time in those, uh, those little towns, like uh, many farms and uh, Chinle. And, uh, oh, I'm having a brain fart. We'll drive through a lot of them. It's Hillerman Country, if you've read his books. So i got to go west on the interstate here for a little while. Window Rock. That, that was the name of the town I was grasping for. We won't actually go through Window Rock, but I'm sure we'll see signs for it. onto the interstate and then we just got to go a few miles and then we're getting right back off again. 
Uh, maybe we'll stop at the Hubble Trading Post. It's always an interesting stop. If it's open, it was closed due to COVID the last couple of times I went through here. So we'll see if they've reopened it. I hope so. So this is where I get off the interstate, a whole five miles on the interstate, and then we're getting off back onto 191 North and Ganado. I believe that's another uh, another name that figures prominently in the Hillerman novels. This is definitely Hillerman country out here on the reservation, the Navajo reservation. He knew this country well, and he knew the Navajo well. And you read his books, and you spend any time out here, it's like, wow, the man knew what he was talking about. He knew the geography, he knew the people, he knew the names. You know, the names of uh, the people in his books. You know, you find out they're common names out here amongst the Navajo. So, yeah, he knew his stuff. I think uh, the wife and I have both read every single Hillerman novel, several times over, some of them. So anyway, got a ways to go here. Once we get up to um, Ganado, maybe we'll stop at the Hubble Trading Post for a bit, if it's open. Um, nothing else I could probably use a comfort stop although I am a man and there's a whole lot of nothing out here the world is my urinal you know I I'm, I don't need to stop generally at a uh, <laughs> at a gas station or anything just to pee but uh, you know maybe the uh, if the place is open maybe the look quick look around maybe uh, a little shopping in the store there they have some interesting stuff and uh, use a real restroom we'll see Well, it looks like it's open. This has been closed for the last two years. Every time I've come through here, it's been closed. So, we'll check it out. Okay, unfortunately, I can't linger here too long. Um, if you'd like to visit the Hubble Trading Post, I, I encourage it. There's a lot to see more than you saw in my video. We're back on uh, 191, heading north. Um, I really couldn't linger there too long because I've got a lot of miles to cover. Oh, it's windy too. Wow, it is windy. It's not so bad when it's a tailwind which it mostly is heading north, but sometimes it's a crosswind <laughs> to blow the truck around. Okay, still driving north on 191, like I'm going to be doing for all day, basically. Um, this is actually a fairly pretty area out here, normally. Problem is, the wind is just howling outside, stirring up a lot of dust. You can't even see the really pretty mountains off to the left. You can hardly see the really pretty valley off to the right as I was driving, so I didn't even bother filming it. And right now I'm coming through an area of fairly heavy dust. Yeah, it is such a windy day. It's crazy windy. And you know what? I think this is just sort of the tail of the storms that are going on in Colorado that I'm trying to avoid by taking this route. I think those storms in Colorado are stirring up all this wind out here in Arizona and uh, getting all this dust flying through the air. Because this is really generally a pretty, 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 pretty nice drive, you know, with lots of nice scenery up here, but <laughs> the scenery is just lost in the, in the dust clouds. Oh, it's not really getting much less dusty. Oh, I'm sneezing too. Even though I don't have the outside air on, it's it's making its way into the truck and it's tickling my nose. Um, I didn't get the camera started fast enough. Um, been tumbleweeds blasting across the road here. Um, a lot of people think of them as like iconic plants of the American West, but I'll tell you what, they're actually an invasive species. A lot of people don't realize it. 
Um, the true name is Russian thistle. They were native to the Russian steppes, and uh, they, uh, the way they, their their life cycle, they have a weak point in the uh, in the stem at ground level, and once the plant matures, um, the plant breaks off at ground level, and the wind blows it across the countryside, and as it tumbles, tumbleweed, as it tumbles across the countryside, it spreads its seeds. Well, it found a new home out here in the American West. <laughs> it, 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 the, it, the tumbleweed loves it out here, at least as much or better than it loved the Russian steppes. So uh, it's kind of taken over the American West. I was keep keep hoping we'll get some tumbleweeds going across the road here as I'm filming, but it doesn't seem to be happening. There were plenty of them before I started. Oh well. Okay, it looks like I am coming up on a pretty bad dust storm up ahead. So I'm slowing down. Fortunately, a lot of other people are slowing down. We'll see how bad visibility gets up here. I can see maybe a mile ahead and then it's all just haze. This area here looks like it's been pretty badly overgrazed. So I guess there's a lot of loose dust for the wind to pick up. Well, it's actually looking like it's clearing up a little as I get deeper into it, okay. I've been in a few bad dust storms where the visibility has dropped to zero really quickly. Not on this trip, but in the past. So I'm always a little leery of them. Because, you know, it's really easy to run into whoever's in front of you if you can't see them or get rear-ended by somebody behind you as you slow down. Chinley! Okay, we have arrived at the outskirts of Chinley. Canyon du Chez is uh, not too far from here. Been there many times. Unfortunately, don't have the time to go visit it today. Show you guys the wonders of Canyon du Chez. You wouldn't be able to see it in this dust anyway, so another time. Well, made it through Chinle, heading north again. I was going to stop at the Burger King in town and get some lunch. It's about 12.30, but uh, oh my god, the line. The line. There must uh, The parking lot was, was overflowing, and the, the line for the drive through there must have been 50 or 60 cars in it. Um, so uh, I decided to just bypass that. I've got a few snacks here in the truck, I guess. Lunch will be some snacks on the road because I don't think there's many more food options ahead of me here until uh, dinner, maybe somewhere. Moab, maybe. I don't know. Um, Grand Junction. But there's a whole lot of nothing still ahead of me here. And it looks like more dust. Starting to think that maybe the, the rain and the sleet and the snow in Colorado wouldn't have been so bad. The dust is really getting to me. I must have sneezed 30 times on this drive so far today. Yep, starting to see some pretty geology out here. Well, the dust has abated a little bit, so we can get a little bit of a look at the landscape out there. Some rock fins over there. Oh, 
We'll see a lot more of this sort of stuff as we get closer to Moab. Took a long way to go to get there. Let's see. I guess I'm uh, somewhere north of Round Rock. Headed for Mexican water. Getting close to the Utah border, but got a ways to go yet. Arizona's a big state. What's this mile marker? 491. So, uh, <laughs> this is a long road. We've got, uh, when did we get on it? Uh, like in the high 200s, I think. So, uh, only come a few hundred miles. Well, I stopped at Rock Point, and I'm going to top off the gas tank because 4.199. I never thought I would see that as a cheap gas price. 4.199. So, um, yeah, here on the reservation, it's a lot less expensive than in the rest of Arizona. I suspect it's just because they're not subject to the state taxes, because the Navajo reservation is basically its own nation with its own rules and, and financial system and taxes and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna fill up here before getting into Utah, because I don't know what the gas price there's gonna be like. Even though I still have more than half a tank. Uh, I wonder if there's gonna be any paint left on the driver's side of the truck. Oh, there goes a tumbleweed. Um, when I get to my destination, Because I can hear it being sandblasted over there by this uh, this grit that's blowing across the road. I've been driving through this sort of stuff for quite a while now. It might be shiny bare metal. Who knows? Should be about to cross into Utah. But I'll tell you what, if anything, the wind is getting stronger the further north I go. It's also getting cloudy. I think we're hitting the edge of the storms that uh, we're seeing in Colorado and further north. Yeah, the crosswinds just want to shake the truck pretty darn bad. Aha, uh -huh. there's a sign coming. Welcome to Utah. Life elevated. Well, it's not that high here. 4,980 feet. Okay. It was higher than that at my Arizona place, but okay. Well, only about 25 miles into Utah, and it's already starting to look like canyon country here. The dust has abated a little bit. So, we can start to see a little bit of the scenery. I think we must have some more road construction up ahead. It hasn't been too bad up to this point. Or, is it construction or? I guess we're just coming up on town, a little town. That's why we're slowing down, not construction, good. Welcome to Bluff, Utah. Okay. That's why we're slowing down. Historic Fort, one half mile. It's been a while since I've been this way. I seem to remember the fort. And I think we go through a canyon, not too much further up the road here. Oh! Holy cow, I'm glad I filled up with gas on the reservation. 4799. Oh my god. Utah, what kind of taxes are you putting on the gas? That's crazy. I was afraid it might be something like this. There's the old Bluff Fort. 
good. Yeah, and here's the canyon we're going to go through. condos right at the foot of the cliffs over there. I prefer my cliffs uncondoed myself, but that's just me. Well, I guess we're about 40-some miles outside of Moab. Geology's starting to get interesting. Strange rock formations. Got the Manti of the Sal Mountains back there. Um, I've been uh, four-wheeling up in the mountains before. It's beautiful up there. You can get some serious altitude up there, too. Those are some tall mountains, let me tell you. Unfortunately, don't have the time to stop and uh, hit the trails up there. It's like maybe not the best weather up near the top, either. It's like some pretty nasty-looking clouds boiling over the top of the mountains. Um, haven't seen any rain yet so far on this road trip coming up on almost two weeks since I left home and haven't seen a drop of rain yet but I we may not make it through the day before uh, that comes to an end um, a little while before I turned on the camera just now I was driving over wet road so they'd obviously gotten a shower but uh, I missed it but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if before we get to Colorado tonight or in Colorado, we get wet. We'll see. Check that out. Isn't that beautiful? Because I'm zoomed in, so it's a little jerky. But it is beautiful out here, outside of Moab. Uh, the wife and I got to get back out here when we can stay sometime. And do some exploring. Oh, holy cow. I just had a look at the external temperature. It's 48 degrees outside. You know, it's just gotten colder and colder as the day's gone on. I had no idea. I'm glad I put jeans on back at the Hubble Trading Post. Yeah, it'd be a rude awakening to get out of the truck right now in shorts. <laughs> Well, we're on the outskirts of Moab, about to roll into town. Got these big palisades over here on the left side. It's a real rock climber's mecca out here. And the road is wet. Um, been seeing lots of puddles. Obviously, I just missed a big rainstorm. In fact, the sky is almost cloudless now, so it must have... It must have rolled through just a little while ago and evaporated, so we'll see. Maybe we'll, we will make it through the day without getting hit by a raindrop. Hard to believe, but maybe. Okay, I'll show you a little bit more of Moab as we get uh, closer into town. Okay, here we are cruising through Moab. Let's see, it's about 4.07 in the afternoon here. So, so far the traffic's not too bad. Might be a little early in the season yet. I think summer is like high season here, when it is just absolutely packed to the gills with people. Ooh, 453 for gas. That's not great. Hope Colorado's better, because I'm pretty sure I've got, you know, I got plenty of gas. I can easily make it into Colorado. We'll see if it's better. I'm not gonna get my hopes up. I haven't seen a decent price of gas since Texas. Okay, 
driving down Main Street through Moab, I saw something out of the corner of my eye that looked very familiar. I'm going to come over here and check it out. This village market. When the wife and I came through here a couple years ago, we stopped here for some supplies. And they had an amazing... They had an amazing... Um, salad bar. Well, we'll go in and see if they still have such an amazing salad bar in this place, because after nothing but some yogurt for breakfast and snacks in the truck all day, I feel the need for some healthy food. Let me scale back the salad bar some since the last time I was here, but I still got a nice salad for dinner and a bottle of gourmet root beer to wash it down with. Okay, got my salad for dinner. It's in the cooler. I'll eat it later. Although as chilly as it is outside, it probably didn't really even need to go in the cooler. And I'm gonna make my way out of Moab. And uh, well, we still got some daylight here. Head up to I-70 and see if I can make it over to Grand Junction tonight. Well, I wish I'd started the camera earlier. Uh, we're, we're leaving Moab just crossed over the Colorado River here. Quite a bit more water in it than there was down in New Mexico when we crossed it uh, back on day three of this road trip. So, uh, I guess it's a little wetter up here in this part of Utah. Uh, we're coming up on Arches National Park. Um, Apparently you need a reservation to get in there these days. I, this is the second sign I've seen saying you need a reservation to get into Arches. I don't know if that's a COVID thing or what, but I've never needed a reservation to go into Arches before, so I'm glad I was not on my itinerary this time. Um, you know, back, oh, probably while I was in college or shortly after I got out, a long time ago, back in the dark ages for you millennials, um, I read the book uh, Desert Solitaire, and uh, Arches National Park was on my itinerary for my very first trip out west. It was a must-see for me, you know, after reading that book. So um, it's a neat place. I highly recommend it. If you uh, if you're coming out here to Moab, you got to see Arches. You got to see it at least once. I've been in there two or three times. I guess you got to make a reservation these days, though, so don't don't forget to do that. It's getting a little exclusive. Anyway, yeah, here's the entrance to the to the national park up here. It's neat. There's there's some amazing rock formations in there. Stuff you won't see probably anywhere else on Earth. It's definitely worth the price of admission, and uh, I guess making a reservation now. Anyway, speaking of interesting rock formations, <laughs> I'm going to be driving through some here for the next 20-odd uh, miles or so. We're about 29 miles away from I-70. So, yeah, I've got a little canyon to go through here. Well, little. <laughs> I'm sure it looks smaller than it is on the on the camera. It's got a wide angle lens. Those cliffs are towering above me, I would imagine. Several thousand feet anyway. Sheer cliffs. Like I said, this is a rock climber's paradise out here. So yeah, this isn't going to be too boring until I get to I-70. The, the, the drive from from uh, the junction of 191 and I-70 into um, Grand Junction can be a little boring. But uh, this part right here, lots of neat rock formations. Right on the edge of the road. Very cool. Okay, well there's uh, Interstate 70 up ahead here mile or so away, I suppose. 
So I've been on 191 here almost all day since uh, back in St. John's, Arizona early this morning. So I'm going to get off here and get on the interstate and head east towards uh, Colorado. And I think I'll spend the night in Grand Junction. It's not getting super late yet. Let's see, what is it? It's only about 5 o'clock local time, I guess. But, uh, you know, I don't need to push too hard. I should be able to make it to the Wyoming place tomorrow by mid-afternoon. And um, I need time to contemplate what route I want to take. And that's probably going to depend on what the weather's like tomorrow. So I'll have to uh, look at the weather tonight. I'll find a motel in Grand Junction, hole up for the night, look at the weather, and see which route I want to take from Grand Junction tomorrow to get up into Wyoming with hopefully the minimum of weather issues. So I got to get up onto I-80 for a while and then past it and I-80 is notorious for being closed down due to bad weather, especially this time of year in the spring. Oh, wow. I don't know if that's showing up. I'm on the north side of the uh, Manti LaSalle Mountains now. Look at all the snow on them. See, we came up from the south side, and you can just see hints of snow in places. But, uh, yeah, wow. Let's see if I can zoom in without wrecking there we go. Yeah, pretty. Anyway, I'm heading due east now towards Grand Junction, Colorado. And there is absolutely nothing on this road between here and Grand Junction, Colorado. No services, no nothing. This is a fairly boring drive. But at least it's not that long. It'll be there before you know it. Yeah, there we are. Next service is 65 miles. Welcome to Colorful Colorado. All right, we're done with Utah. We're in Colorado, not too far from um, Grand Junction. Back then, there's a sign coming up, but it's going to tell us just how far it is to Grand Junction. 26 miles. So I think I'm going to find a motel, Grand Junction, and hold up for the night. Okay, almost to Grand Junction. There are some seriously big mountains in front of me on the uh, eastern horizon there. Uh, I see snow caps, I see lots of clouds on top of them, and they look very big and very far away, though. Um, like I said, I'm almost to Grand Junction. I'm in Frucha, and I'm going to get off here because I've stayed here before, and one of my possible uh, routes up north into Wyoming is back a couple of miles up the interstate. So I'm going to get off here and not go any further east just in case... I decide to take that route up tomorrow. We shall see. Let's see, somewhere down here. There it is. Yep, as usual. Not going to stay any place uh, high, highfalutin. There's a Super 8 back here I've stayed at before with an Einstein Brothers Bagels right next to it where I can get some breakfast. So that, I think, is where I'm going to stay the night. Not terribly expensive, and breakfast within easy reach. So I will probably see you guys in the morning, in the next video, for uh, day five of this road trip as we head up into Wyoming. So I will see you then.